knew you had to propose! Yeah, buddies! We're gonna fucking propose to him! Let's go! Your palms started to feel sweaty with nerves, but you pushed on ahead, walking over to Cove. He turned to you and chuckled. We had to propose before we leave so we can get married. This is the whole purpose. Um, okay, I want to know how we're gonna propose. What took you so long? And you knew this was it. Wait, we're proposing right now? Wait, no, this isn't romantic. Wait, hold up, V. This is not romantic. Hold on. Hey, Cove? <laughs> yeah? He mumbled the answer out of the corner of his mouth. His eyes glued to his father's condo. Okay, wait, we're going to a romantic place. We're going to a romantic place. All right, all right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Would you go to the poppy hill with me? Cove moved to stare directly at you. Mouth dropped into a tiny frown as he absorbed your suggestion to suddenly change the plan. But once he did see the look on your face, he shook off any lingering confusion. That smile you loved grew once again. Of course. Of course, lead the way. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. You released a breath through closed teeth, pairing uh, that with a nod. To the hill behind your old house you went, just the two of you. It was a journey you were intimately familiar with, but this time was simply not the same. Actually doing it, you felt heavy and tense. You were full of deep, powerful emotions you needed to express. Painfully nervous. It was the hardest thing you'd ever attempted. True happiness. Your decision was natural and you had nothing to worry about. Oh no. Um, I want to say deep and powerful emotions. I feel like that's fun. Let's go with that one. You pulled your legs forward with great effort. Cove began to worry over your apparent strain, but you weren't able to consult him. Not then. He was your world. It was overwhelming just how badly you were in love with him and how much you wanted to always be with him. This is the perfect time for this because it's right near Valentine's Day too. Did we, we, we need to like talk about that for a second. Like perfect timing for this game to be released. It wouldn't be possible to keep that inside much longer. Under your feet, tarmac gave way to dirt and sparse tufts of grass, which then transitioned into a lush full field of green and white. The gentle fluttering of petals was your greeting. Do it now because we gotta do it before Code proposes to us. <laughs> Love is a competition. Love is a battlefield and we're gonna win it by proposing first. I don't know how love works. <laughs> That's it. That, it isn't that how love love? Uh, baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Isn't that exactly how it works? There's no winning against Daddy Cove. No, we're gonna win and we're gonna propose first and then he can't propose to us. Poppy Hill, the exact spot where you were, your, where you first met your new neighbor over 15 years ago. We've been dating for 15, no. We didn't start dating until step three. So it hasn't been 15 years. I was gonna say, holy shit. You shared countless memories here over the years, catching fireflies, watching the clouds, simply taking time to just talk to one another. You grew there together side by side. This small part of the world was inextricably linked with Cove in your mind. It was the place where your most important encounter occurred and you knew it needed to be the place where you asked him that most important question. Um, it was silent. You and Cove faced one another, affection filling the small space between you. He still didn't know why you were doing this, but he transparently didn't care. He was only happy to be there, to be with you. <laughs> there was an almost painful pinging in your chest. The strength of your emotions for him and the knowledge that he held the same feeling back for you made your body ache. You never would have imagined this when you first knew the grumpy little boy he was, but now as adults, it was the absolute truth. You wanted to be with Cove. You needed him to be yours forever. That's a weird sentence. You loved Cove. You loved him so deeply. At that moment, you couldn't have been more certain. Every step you'd ever taken in this life was leading you right here. What do we do? <laughs> do we begin our proposal with actions or do we begin our proposal with words? What are we doing? <laughs> We're proposing. <laughs> I vote for words too. I feel like it transitions better. Actions take down, calm <laughs> down with your love. Terrible, that's so violent. Okay, two for at words and two for actions. We need a tiebreaker here. Uh, I can't, I guess I could be the tiebreaker, but I voted for words. 
Where is just equalized most? Thank you, dragon. Thank you. All right, words it is. Here we go. <laughs> you begin your proposal with words. Oh shit, now I'm gonna pick the words. God damn it. Cove, will you marry me? Cove, James Holden. You are the love of my life. I want to marry you. Please, would you marry me? I hope to never be without you. Marry me. I want you to be my husband, Cove. It'd be the happiest person in the entire world if you marry me. Fuck off into a headlock of love. Terrible. <laughs> Stop it. Oops. We can also see what happens if we do actions. Okay, so if we do actions, you get down on one knee. You pick up a nearby poppy and hold, hold it up to Cove while getting down on one knee. <gasps> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm team action. We're doing action. We're doing- we're doing action. Tell me that's not the most romantic thing you've ever heard in your life. I'm gonna pick a poppy and we're gonna give it to Cove. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I prefer a headlock. Get out of here, dragon. <laughs> headlock of love. Oh my god. Your purple eyes show- we have purple eyes. Your purple eyes shone in the bright light of day, and you hoped he could see the strength of your love for him as you looked up at him from down on one knee. <laughs> I guess I support headlocks of love too, I can get on it. It all happened in slow motion, his expression of serene affection shifting into quavering awe, eyebrows lifting nearly to his seafoam green hairline, and his mouth stretching out to the limit. But despite Ko's mouth being open, he didn't breathe a word. He was entirely incapable of that, so you voiced your own thoughts. Here we go! This is, this is, this is, this is the order. I'm down for this. Headlocks is a new down on one knee. <laughs> Team headlock of love. <laughs> so when you propose to your partner, you're gonna headlock them? This is, this is where we're at. We're headlocking our partners of love. Okay. Alrighty, Rooney. I guess that's what we're doing now. That's that is how everyone has to propose. If you don't propose that way, um, I'm gonna show up at your house and I'm gonna be like, "Yo, um, you broke the laws of the universe. You have to headlock uh, of love a person, and you didn't do that. So, sorry." Headlocks of love then finished Cove with an elbow drop directly to his heart. Terrible. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, all right. Uh, what do we say? I'm gonna call him the love of my life. Let's do it. You're the love of my life. I want to marry you. Oh, is he gonna cry? He's gonna cry. We're gonna make Cove cry. And that Cove crumbled onto the ground, his legs completely giving out underneath him. Bubbling drops of tears flow down to the grass just as heavily. Devin. <laughs> ah, I love this man. That single word was all he could choke out, but that alone was all the inspiration you needed to continue your open-hearted confession. You had to let Cove know everything you'd kept to yourself about your relationship, your history, your love for him. I still remember the day we got together all those years ago. I'll never forget it. That was the best day of my life until now, hopefully. And with every day that's gone by, the more you've meant to me. Why is this so cute? I can't. It's too sweet. I'm gonna lose a tooth. Um, you make me so incredibly happy. You're pretty and lovely and wonderful and perfect. I've only gotten as far as I have thanks to you. I can't even imagine not being with you for the rest of our lives. Wait, what? What is this? Option three? What? What? Uh, what? <laughs> who did the Who did the poll? <laughs> what were the options? <laughs> I clearly wasn't paying attention to the, your poll. I'm so sorry. Oh, you did a poll for the proposal line, but I was too late. I'm so sorry. I should have waited. I feel your being is going to happen, though, someday. N I'm too trash. Excuse you. Stop. Don't call yourself trash. I swear to God, I'm going to fly through this computer screen and flick you on the forehead. You're not trash. You're a lovely human being who deserves all the love in the world and all the support and will one day find a, a person if you want to and 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 propose if you want to a reminder that you never ever ever have to propose to someone you never even have to date someone it's totally valid to not okay just like a reminder of that okay okay 
Anyways, if you are fulfilled by your relationships in your life, that is the most important thing. High loves of love can be more romantic, platonic. High loves are also valid. These are all true. It's valid if you don't want someone, and it's valid if you... What did I just say? <laughs> did I just say if you don't want someone? <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, I'm moving on. Um, I can't even imagine uh, not being with you for the rest of our lives. I love you. It's not possible to express how much I feel with only words. <gasps> I'm gonna say that one. Uh, and once more you asked, will you marry me? You stared at him unwaveringly. <laughs> you looked back at him with dampening eyes. Aw, oh, let's cry too. I wanna cry too. I feel like that's cute. Um, no, no, Jackie, we'll do unwaveringly for you. The corners of Coast mouth pulled up as he left every word reached deep into his heart. Still smiling like the sunshine, he parted his lips to answer, but all that came out was a gas squeaking sound. Frustrated when he tried to push past that block, he instead got himself into a stuttering coughing fit. Oh my god, this boy is so cute. Sorry. Um, don't worry, I already know. No need to rush. We've got the rest of our lives for this. There, there, Kobe! <laughs> Why does that sound so patronizing, Kobe? You laughed warmly. It was just like him. You shook your head fondly. That was your Kobe. Please don't force yourself. It's okay. Uh, I'm gonna laugh. We're gonna laugh. Kobe instinctively reached forward and gripped you for support. He hung his head low, taking in slowly de deepening breaths. You didn't mind in any way, shape, or form. You'd wait forever for Kobe if it was necessary. Eventually, the trembling in, his, the, in the fingers that were holding you settled out. He was able to lift his head once more to meet your gaze. I will. Ah! <laughs> we won! Despite tears still clinging to his eyes, the words were evenly spoken. Cove had complete confidence in this. Devin, I'd be so grateful to marry you. There's nothing more that I could ever ask for. You never understand the term music to your, you never understood the term music to your ears better than when you heard the way he laughed so sweetly in that moment. I've thought about this a lot, you know, probably way too often, and now it's real. It's happening. I don't know if I'm even good enough with words to tell you how happy it makes me. You're what you're what's made my life such a wonderful, beautiful, amazing experience. I'm luckier than I have any right to be just to know you. I love you. Thank you for asking me and for being mine and letting me be yours. I love you. Let's get married. Ah! <laughs> so cute. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Delicately, Coke lifted out an, an open hand. You started understand, understanding what the gesture meant instant, instantly. You gifted the poppy over to his rightful owner. You tied the poppy in the shape of a ring. Well, that's cute. We're in a fucking romance novel. I'm here for this. You created the makeshift ring and then supplied it onto its rightful place on Cove's finger. It was delicate fit that wouldn't last, but he had no complaints. His voice thick with emotion, Cove whispered, It's perfect. I'll keep it always. His eyes were transfixed on the poppy. He admired it openly before finally lifting his gaze to meet yours. The view of the ocean blue held glossy drops of water and somehow all you could think was that was him. Cove Holden, the man you loved and now the person you were going to marry. You pushed him down and kissed him. Why do I feel like that's what you all want me to do? Cause I know you, we're not gonna do that, okay? We're not doing that. We're doing you smiled from the bottom of your heart, okay? Okay. Thank you. We're keeping it wholesome here. We're keeping it wholesome. <laughs> there are no options we can get behind. <laughs> Dragon! <laughs> you felt untouchable in your happiness. Your smile widened impossibly and it was reflected back at you in Cove's adoring expression. The place where you met, where you grew, where you fell in love was now the place where you shared your life to get together truly began. Your eyes drifted closed to let yourself experience in it, to anchor yourself in this moment and hold on for as long as possible. You, the both of you, never wanted to let go. You were certain of it. The rest of your days would be spent side by side. It was all you'd hoped for. When the swirling excitement of your new engagement relaxed back into a more familiar style of gentle comfort, your relationship brought Cove stood up. 
Okay, jumping to conclusions, Ari. I was gonna say embrace it with a hug. <laughs> Were you? Were you? A hug of a headlock? I don't believe you. He offered you a hand so you could rise with him. Yeah, let's do it. You were more than willing to place your hand in his, then he lifted you up. A lingering warmth filled the air around you, much more than the normal heat of summer. It was all your own. With a gentle tone, Cove spoke once more. Let's go see our families. The smile on his face was building. You knew he was excited to tell them the news. Hey mom, guess what? I know it's your big day of when you got married, but joke's on you. I just glitched. Did anyone see that? <gasps> Anyways, joke's on you because now it's my big day. <laughs> We're literally about to be those people. Go eat something, dragon. I hope it's yummy. Hi, Kenny. How you doing? I'm good. I'm doing well. We're playing our life, which is always my favorite. So we're having we're having fun. Um, you arrived back at the doorstep of the Holden household. Your fiance put his hand on the doorknob and took a deep breath. It was clear why he hesitated. Once he twisted that doorknob, it would be time to announce that you were going to be married. He stole a glance at you. You tried to stay calm for both of your sakes. He nodded with his confidence, clearly bol bolstered. Then Cope opened the door. You're gonna play some games? I hope you have fun, Kenny. What did you have for breakfast? I hope it was yummy. We're here. Together, you stepped into the house, hearts beating fast. Cove stopped before even placing its foot back down. There was unexpected company. You saw your family, not just your mom's, but Liz and Lee as well, along with them, Terry and Miranda, were curled up on a couch and Derek sipped at a glass of water. Oh my God, Derek's here? Surprise! Surprise! Everyone else followed and let out a chorus of surprises. Cove's eyes widened and he swallowed hard. This wasn't part of the plan. You had scrambled eggs, bread, and bean curd tofu. Ooh, Kenny, what a breakfast. That sounds yummy. What took you so long? Yeah. Yeah, you slow pokes. Cove remained almost completely frozen in place, though he did finally place his foot to the ground. Oh god, I can't do Cliff's voice. <clears throat> hey, sport! <laughs> Devin. Hey, sport, Devin! <laughs> What? Why is that the gender neutral phrase he decided to go with? Hey, sport! Your friends came over for a visit, so I invited them to breakfast. Any hoosies. And since we're cooking for a crowd, any hoosies, we decided to ask Pam Noel and all over. Pretty nice, huh? Oh, this is perfect. Wow, we've got to surprise everyone too. You laugh nervously. Hello, you're all here. You went rigid. Um, I, it says I'm laughing nervously. I'm gonna say we laugh nervously. An awkward smile crept on your face as you tried to absorb that everyone was here. Everyone was going to know. The group looked back with confused expressions. Um, Cove automatically rubbed the faint scar in his arm. Ah, uh, I, we, I, we can do it. We can do this, Cove. I got it. Don't, we got this. We, I can do it. You don't have to. I got this. Um, all eyes turned to you. It was an awful lot of eyes at once. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm intending to take Cove James Holden's hand and magically. <laughs> Why does that sound like something a robot would say? It'd be like, I am attending to take Cove James Holden's hand in matrimony. I'm sure you can guess. Cove and I are getting married. Cove and I are engaged. I'm getting married. I proposed and Cove and he accepted. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to do the last one. Cove nodded with a serious expression. Right. Th that's right. I'm going to marry Devin. <laughs> Cove and I are engaged. Oops. Cove reached over to take your hand as a physical sign of your union. <laughs> the room filled with cheers of congratulations. You heard Terry's distinctive whoop and your mom start to joyfully whisper to each other. Lee squealed and Kyra cooed. Cooed? She's a bird. She's part of the pigeon cult. Kyra's one of us. There was no confusion or need for pause. Everyone in your life was immediately on board with your plans. 
Cope turned his head and beamed at you, excitement in his smile. It was coupled with a fond squeeze to your hand. You grinned back at him. You grinned back at him. Maybe you did, I might have misheard. I mean, it's still canon either way. Suddenly, Cove was almost bowled over by Cliff, throwing his arms around him. A headlock of love. Cliff gets it. Uh. His father compressed him even more tightly as Cove regained his balance. Um, I just found it funny. No, it's, I, that was, that was good, Pyra. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you, Cove. The two of you are going to be happy. I'm sure of it. Dad. <laughs> Cove sniffled. Eyes wide and emotional. Then he hugged his father back just as firmly. Yeah, I will be. Both of us will be. Talk about daddy, am I right? The only daddy, the only daddy we need in this game is Cove, okay? It's just Cove. Cove is the daddy. Cove is it, okay? No one else. While the two embrace. <laughs> Yeah, 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 okay. While the two embraced, Kyra came up to your side. She put a hand on your shoulder and spoke gently. Thank you. The vibes called for this. It did, it did. <laughs> Bucky, please. <laughs> Thank you for being so wonderful to my baby. I'm lucky and grateful that you're going to be a part of my life forever. Mom! Mom 3! I love you! Cliff pulled back and switched to patting the sides of Ko's arms. Well put, Kyra. Devin is a keeper for sure. Kira uh, sidestepped over to her son and pinched his cheek, then she tapped his nose playfully. Clucky and glee grateful. Gleeful? I don't know. <laughs> Cliff gave her space, though continued to keep hold of Cove. Your own parents had now reached you. They were uh, took hold of one of your arms each. Cluck, cluck, mother heckers. <laughs> you all, I love you all so much. I can't believe how grown up you are, but I couldn't be happier without how it all happened. Congratulations, Devin. You are one of the smartest cookies there are. You're making an amazing life for yourself. Happy birthday, who? Me? Thanks for the biddies. What? <laughs> Thanks for the 80 biddies. I had some biddies left over. It's not my birthday. <laughs> You should say happy engagement. Excuse you. We just got engaged. That's what the bits are for. Happy engagement. I'm rewriting history. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. <laughs> oh my god. Liz elbowed her way to the front with Lee, not far behind. Your mom stayed at your sides. Lee squealed in your face, pumping a fist into the air. Seriously? This is totally amazing! You're seriously getting married? It's like we're real adults and all that. Well, we are. Okay. Yeah, I'd almost be hard to believe that my baby's sibling is marrying a person. You know, if Cove wasn't such an obvious choice as a husband for you. I mean, true, we, yeah, that's true, that's fair, that's fair, Liz. Her smile turned abnormally soft. You're doing good. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice Ko's parents release him. He took the opportunity to slide closer to you and nod at Liz. Thanks for the positive rating. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's someone's birthday today. Happy birthday, happy very unbirthday to me, to you. A very happy unbirthday. No, we didn't. We didn't get engaged. Yeah, we did. We did, though. The game. Ah, uh, happy bird o'clock. Happy bird o'clock, everyone. Happy bird o'clock. Lee giggled and your moms had some chuckles. Cope stood awkwardly, not entirely sure if he or Liz was being laughed at. Your three friends had stayed back. You believe that they were intentionally giving your families a chance to have a moment. Oh my god! What the fuck happened to Derek? <laughs> Look how rip he got! <laughs> why, why are his muscles doing that? But once they said their pieces, it didn't take long for your friends to swarm you excitedly. Congratulations on the engagement. It's crazy how you're, we're really at this point of our lives. Some days it feels like high school was yesterday. So great. But it's great. You both are definitely Sunset's Bird's best couple. Terry nodded eagerly. Actually, I think you two are the best couple, but that's okay. 
You are aspiration. I'm stoked that you're gonna be official official. This is a big step, but I'd say you've more than earned it with everything you've been through over the years. You both deserve to be with each other for the rest of your lives. Cove had appeared weepy before, but this sealed it. He cried, everyone's word had built up and coalesced into Cove's shedding the happiest tears you'd seen. Thank you. Group hug! <laughs> you spread your arms wide, welcoming everyone in for a good squeeze. There's so many people. You can hack it. Uh, um, sure, let's do it. <laughs> so cute. Derek can give me a serious headlock of love. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I mean, Derek is a second love choice. Technically, you could date Derek when he asks you out. I don't know if it would last, but you could. Ko's eyes were the first arms around you. Although it didn't take long for everyone else to join in, you and Cove were squished into a giant hug of family and friends. I did not say that. What? <laughs> a bird o'clock? <laughs> but I wouldn't mind. With Derek? I miss this? Who's Derek? Derek is... Wait, let me scroll back. Derek is this one. He's this one. That's Derek. <laughs> I'm just lurking and I hear bird o'clock. What the, what the fuck is happening? I, butt spot. Butt spot is happening. That's your answer. <laughs> um, okay, we're squashed between our family. Wait, someone's birthday? Who? No one, it's no one's birthday. It's no one's birthday. No one's birthday, it's not a birthday. There is, there is no birthday happening. It's someone's birthday somewhere, but not mine, okay? Uh, it's my unbirthday today. It's my very happy unbirthday. No one's birthday is happening. Okay? Okay? Okay. It's not your birthday, Buggy. Don't lie. <laughs> happy birthday, someone. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Cove wiggled a little, little to embrace you tighter. He pressed his cheek against yours, still wet from his un oncoming tears. It's bur it's not my birthday! <laughs> you are the bestest always and forever. That's you, son. And I know you're talking to Buggle, but it's you. Good luck, kiddos. You've got a journey ahead of you. It's not Buggy's birthday! <laughs> it's not anyone's birthday, stop! <laughs> Buggy's birthday is in April! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna fight everyone. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. We're just giving out birthdays like Oprah. We're like, it's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's everyone's birthday here today. Oh my god. Uh, Cliff agreed with a chuckle. They've known each other for 15 years already and still haven't gotten sick of each other yet. How hard could making it work for the rest of their lives be? Facts. It's Facts. no trouble. For the two of them, not difficult at all. I love that emote, Darmo. Oh my god. Incredible. I'm one day older than I was yesterday. That's true. You sure are, buddy. Um, you all better come around for the actual wedding. <laughs> Refresh Cove didn't run away even once during this big life change. <laughs> you focus on taking the moment. Thank you so much, everyone. I don't even know what to say. Mm. We're gonna focus on the moment. Darmo, that emote. It's so good, right? I love that emote, Darmo. How did, who made it? Who made that emote? It's incredible. Did you draw that? I love it. Surrounded by your family, old friends who had stuck by you for years, and the love of your life, you took everything in. You soaked up their love, their excitement, the feeling of anticipation that the future was a mere hair's breadth away. With the hug complete, people once again spread out so everyone had breathing room. From your ear to your cheek, over the bridge of your nose and to your other ear, your blush warmed your skin, and it didn't stop there. It spread out every inch, encompassing, encompassing you with affection. You could feel with every encouraging pat and excited hug, the outpouring of love and acceptance from your friends and family. Truly touched, you watched them step back and take their seats again. When the excited energy buzzing around the table started to calm, you had a second to truly appreciate this view. The most important people in your life all together again. It felt, still felt too good to be true to have everyone here. And then you noticed that Kira stood back up. Kyra, Kira, Kyra, Kyra stood back up. 
Um, I took an emote and I edited it. I love that. It's cool. Is it your birthday? <laughs> Every day is my birthday. Oh my god, all of you. I hope someone's birthday is actually today and they come into chat and they're like, no, it's my birthday because I'm going to bop all of you on the head. She clapped her hands once in a satisfying smack. Anywho. I hate to interrupt, but I thought you'd want to know that the food's done cooking. Oh. Food? <laughs> oh. I kind of forgot that was what we're here for. Embarrassed Cove scratched the back of his neck and kept his gaze away from anyone in particular. The crowd burst into loud fits of laughter. Yeah, that would show us up. Exactly. Oh my god, happy birthday. Stop being! I'm gonna fight you. I have two birthdays. One is a worm and one is a human. When did you get born as a worm, bud? Since I know your human birthday. Despite my birthday being in December, it's my birthday. Okay, terrible. It's your birthday year. <laughs> wow, I didn't think you would ever forget about your precious food. No offense, Devin. He eats like it's both the first and last time he's doing it. I am born today, one day old. Oh, okay, your, your worm birth is today. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're reborn as a worm today. Okay. Liz directed that last part at you with a sincerely apologetic shrug. Meanwhile, Derek shook his head, fighting back a grin. As funny as that is, Devin's definitely does a better job at getting Cove's attention than Reels do. Cove would rather look at me than eat a meal. Cove. <laughs> Clearly. Cove's stare never left the floor, but you could tell he was listening to their teasing. Leaning back in his chair, he quietly crossed his arms and pouted. Your skin prickled from the heat of the blush, rising to the surface of your skin, but you cocked your head to the side with, a more, with an impish grin. Hey, at least I can trust he's not going to run off with a plate of spaghetti. Food is a competitor I can beat. That had Liz and Derek bursting into another fit of giggles. Pleased with yourself, you glanced at Cove and saw a faint wobble of a smile there too. Cliff crossed the floor to place a pile of silverware on the table, and then he dropped the stuff on the other surfaces around the rest of the living room. When he was done, he gestured towards the food. Okay. Worm birth, yes. Oh my god. You are a meal? No, I'm the thing that beats the meal. Okay? Um, that's because Ko thinks you're a snack, true. That is because we are a snack. His favorite snack? Oh my god, y'all have the same brain. <laughs> We are the best snack in the world. Cove is like yummy. Let me marry that. Because he is. He's marrying that. The place where that's us to Cove. I ain't never, never gonna stop loving, loving you, Cove. Bitch. The place are in the kitchen. Serve yourself. <clears throat> the place are in the kitchen. Serve yourselves and sit where you'd like. The guests happily formed a line and the meal was steadily passed around. Before long, each person claimed a seat in the Holden living room area. Some at the table, others on the kitchen island, and some situated at the couches. Conversations trickled across various clusters of friends as everyone dug in. Okay, have fun watching scary things! I hope you enjoy! Cole finished his plate in record time with a pleased sigh. He put his fork down and surveyed the room. This is really cool. Just how we're getting to do this kind of thing. I like this too, Cove. I hope we'll be able to make this happen again. Our moms age like fine wine. I love them. Um, I still need to get my food. Be back quickly. Oh my god, dragon, please go eat. Go eat, go eat. What are you eating? I hope it's delicious. Go get food. We'll still be here. <laughs> yes, the two of you might even dare to celebrate your yearly anniversary. Gasp! <gasps> Every year. The smirk on Liz's face grew only wider as your mom giggled at her teasing. Ma shook her head, chuckling softer now. Shush. Liz, shush. True. Honestly, we just might. We've made a good point. It does come around every year. You should. Seriously, you deserve a big celebration for your magical day. The kids are right. You've got a lot of people who want to appreciate you. You've got to give them a chance. It's rice with, oh my god, I keep hitting the wrong button. It's rice with lentil, curry, and spicy dressing. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, I quite like the comfort, um, like a comfort food. What's, okay, what's everyone's favorite comfort food? I think mine is definitely mac and cheese for sure. Or, or 
gummies. Sour gummies, regular gummies, gummies. Mac and cheese and gummies are my comfort food. Or cheese sticks. <gasps> cheese sticks. I love cheese sticks. Mm. Yep, all of the above. Now I'm hungry. And crab rangoons, because I love crab rangoons. Ramen? Ramen's a good choice. Do you do anything to change it, or do you do, like, the package ramen? It's true. I know I have a lot to thank you for. There are more nods of agreement around the room, and your moms took each other's hands for support. Neither were expecting so much encouragement. Crab rangoon, yum, right, Jackie? Right? It, for me, it's spice, uh, spicy rice or noodle stuff. Ooh, yeah, dragon. Those are both really good, too. I like pineapple fried rice. Jackie, yum. Also, Jackie, is your mom still there? Hi, Jackie's mom. How was your visit with your mom? I hope it was nice. I know it got kind of like messed up because of the snow. I hope it ended up being really lovely though. Um, no, mom left this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I hope you're doing okay. I hope it was fun. I hope you had a good time together. I do two packets of ramen and usually mix some pesto and parmesan in it. <gasps> so you like make you make like a mix of of uh, different types of like pasta meals. Um, it was super fun. We played games on stream. She loved it. I have to watch the VOD still. I have to watch the VOD of that, Jackie. What game did you end up playing? Did you play Stardew? I um, played House Flipper. Oh, you played House Flipper? Oh, that's awesome. I said I can't play it until she visits again. <laughs> Wait, your mom is so cute, Jackie. I love her. Oh my gosh. She'll think about it and I'll tell Lanny to stop thinking so hard if she doesn't agree. My mom is super cute and I love her too. I'm glad, I'm glad. Pam! Good. Good job, mom. Now with that settled, let us continue to enjoy this perfect gathering. Uh... Let's go, lesbians! Go. Let's go! Where are we going, lesbians? Where are we going? <laughs> let's go, lesbians! <laughs> True, they are the lesbian moms. Your mom is the cutest indeed. I can't believe I missed the stream. I'm so mad. I'm so mad I missed it. I wanted to I wanted to say hi to your mom so bad. Uh, you wanna know who else being here would make it perfect? Who are we talking about? Who would who? Who do we need? As amazing as this was, you couldn't help but think of the absent faces. And seconds everyone's curiosity curiously turned their attention to you. Baxter, Jeremy, Shy, none of the above. Ew, go back. We're not doing that. I hate all of those people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want any of those people. <laughs> hmm. There was playfulness in Kara's stare as she scanned the room. She slowly placed her index finger on her chin. Now that I think of it, there's something I haven't done in a while. Eyebrows were raised at Kara's incomplete thought. She was wordlessly urged to continue. I think it's Kyra, didn't hesitate. Look through all the photos, all the photos Cliff that one has here. Wouldn't it be fun for all of us? Oh my God, let's embarrass Cove. What? Mom, why would you say that? Practically all of those photos are of me. Very cute. And that's why embarrassing my baby boy is just one of the perks of being a mom. Much to Cove's dismay, his mom was thoroughly entertained at his outburst. She whipped in your direction. Meanwhile, Cliff eagerly stood up with a wave of proud affection for his son and completely missed Kira's teasing intent. Oh. I think that's a great idea. Anyone else interested in the pictures? Yeah. I am. Lee shot her hand up before Cliff could even take a full step. Terry and Miranda snuck each other a glance before nodding with matching grins. That sounds swell. That's fantastic. That would be lovely, Cliff. Mom tried to hide her amusement behind her hand, but she couldn't stop the snicker that slipped out. <laughs> oh boy. Um, uh, poor Cove, everyone loves to pick on you. <laughs> Everyone's giving Cove headlocks of love through pictures. Uh, I wanna see them. It's been too long since I last saw little Cove. Mr. Holden met your gaze with a soft look that told you that he was thinking the same thing. Oh my god, Jackie, those emotes are so cute. Himbo shy, me. I'm a himbo shy. This is, this, I love that. I bet this will be a gold mine of entertainment. Cove buried his face in his hands and sighed slowly. His shoulders deflated in defeat. <sighs> Fine, we can take a look. Everyone happy with picture time? The priest man is sexy? Buggy, 
you know I love you and your random spurts of ADHD words and phrases that I hear when we're doing Discord calls and things together. I want you to know this is one of those moments. This is a moment of ADHD, what the fuck are you saying? Um, what priest man is sexy? Uh, what? <laughs> Uh, that's from Lagon Leo, cute gay, uh, himbo streamer, mostly DVD, but also variety. Ooh, I'll have to go check him out, Jackie. Um, who are we mocking? <laughs> I'm watching Midnight Mass. Oh, okay. Are we allowed to call priests sexy? I don't know. Is that blasphemy? I'm not religious. You tell me. Oh, no, I bonked myself. <laughs> Pyro, you gotta double bonk yourself for bonking yourself. Um... Yeah, fun. Blasphemy is sexy. We're all going to hell anyways, right? It's just la layers. <laughs> they both excitedly raise a fist to victory. Smaller cheers from your friends and family work their way around the room, and even you bounce up to your feet excitedly. Cliff flipped open his faded album and physical pictures. He held it up to his face. The corner of his eyes crinkled, and though the book covered much of his face, you were certain he was smiling fondly. Okay, I'll come back with updates. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Keep coming in with the random updates about sexy priests. Sounds great. Hell is the world outside, but this here is a kind of heaven. What's that from? Is that from something? Did you make that up, Pyro? <gasps> Did you make that up? That's beautiful. Um, but he didn't keep it to himself long. Laying the family album on the dining table, you and the rest of the party gathered around to get a peek. Look at baby Cove! He's so fat! <laughs> the Fritz picture, he's so cute! I love it! As baby Cove and the cute little onesie, they were several coos and ahs from the group, and Cliff's eyes were shiny with tears as he sniffled. It's from me. I made it up. That's beautiful, Pyra. I love that. Baby Cove looks high as fuck. You're not wrong. He does. Oh, no. He's grown so much. Oh, my. That's my darling angel. Wait, is that, is that, are we joking if we say that? Because I kind of want to say that jokingly. Even as a baby, you look unimpressed. Oh my god. <laughs> nice one, Zico. Why the baby look like that? I don't know, Anna Ren. They really did him dirty, though. Baby Coach just vibing, truly. They leaned your head into his shoulder as he said it. He, his scowl quickly fizzled into a pout. The longer you batted your eyelashes at him. <laughs> Do you think he could still pull the onesie look off? No, absolutely not. Which is a shame. Infant Cove has a real look. You tried to in vain to hide your smirk, but you knew that Cove was aware of your quiet giggling. He sighed ex for I can't talk. As 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 for as for help expertly expert oh my god hoping that the moment would pass immediately <laughs> after breakfast and the photo showcase everyone decided to stick around hanging around mr holton's house turned into taking a walk around the neighborhood and then for lunch you switched over to your mom's condo it was really good time enjoying each other's company but eventually the sun began to set and there was nothing else to delay your friends and family from going home Inside your mom's house and the, and the home you had been raised in, the group was taking their time saying their goodbyes. It was tough for you and your family, your friends. You knew what was weighing on the mood. It might be some time before you see one another again. It was a pleasure having you all here, and you're welcome to come around again anytime. Ma racked an arm around mom with a light chuckle. Mom leaned her head gently into her wife and they both beamed. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I know we're all adults with our own hectic lives, but we appreciate the time taken to visit. Snorting, Liz crossed her arms, leaned on one hip out to the side while her lips curled teasingly. You make it sound like it, this was such a struggle. Some of these people still live here and it was a vacation for everyone else. Even so, it was very thoughtful, and I hope everyone has a safe trip home. Kira clapped a hand on Cliff's shoulder. She, he was puzzled as she leaned in so he could hear her. 
that means you too. It's dangerous crossing the street. Remember to look both ways. Oh my god, ultimate fan, hello! I've been here for like two minutes. I'm already dead from the cute help. This game is so good. Wait until we get to the wedding. Wait until we get to the wedding. We're almost done with like the pre-wedding stuff we already proposed. So here we go. We're entering into the wedding phase. How are you doing, ultimate fan? I hope you're having a lovely day. I love you. Um... Shut up, there's a wedding? Yes, yes, yes. Also go follow Ultimate Fan, a lovely VTuber streamer we love. Also your birthday was like a week or two ago. Happy belated birthday. See, there we go. Here's someone you can say happy birthday to everyone. Ultimate Fan's birthday was like a week or two ago. Unless, you know, I'm wrong and it was longer, but um, I have no sense of time. So I don't know, you're, you're gonna help, have to help me with that one. Um. Hey now. Hey now, this is what dreams are made of. Dude, I just left for like an hour earlier and I feel so much better than I felt like all day. Oh my God. I need to correct my sleepover. Did you go to bed an hour earlier? And that's correct, my birthday was the 31st. Oh, I got it, I got it, I'm so good. There we go, there you go. People, someone to say happy birthday to everyone. Someone to say happy birthday to. Um, I, I I hope it was a lovely day and sleeping is powerful. And so is drinking water. Make sure you're drinking water, everyone. Sleeping and drinking water. Yeah, yeah, good luck with all the important grown-up things I'm sure you'll have to do when you're all out of here. Definitely, I'll give updates next time something exciting happens or something lame so I can vent about it. How nice. I'm glad Lee won't be forgetting the little people. Never ever. Mm -hmm. I'll keep in touch too. Very nice. You better. Well, me and Randy aren't going far, so we can keep an eye on the town for the rest of ya. Nothing will get past us. Right, we'll make sure everything is okay. No need to worry at all. Thanks. That's kind of you. <laughs> Why am I making him sound like that? That's kind of you. Uh, I royally fucked up my sleep schedule on accident. I was up until like 4 a.m. because I couldn't freaking sleep. Thank God I had today off. I would have cried if I had to work today. Oh my God, Ultimate Fan. I know a lot of people have sleep sleep struggles. I struggle sometimes to go to bed. I, I don't know if anyone else finds this, but I am such a night person. Like I sleep so much better at like sleep. I work so much better at night. But like the world doesn't work like that. Like you have to be a morning person for like normal society. And it's so hard because like I'll be wide awake at like 1 a.m. And then I have to get up and go to classes at 8 a.m. <laughs> it's just like the struggle is real. Um, all of these characters are sexy in this show. Who else besides Daddy Priest? Who's sexy? Lay it on me. Miranda and Terry gave each other please smiles, already committing to their self-appointed task. Derek scratched the back of his head, wearing a pensive look. It's always sad when I- It's always sad when I, uh, have to leave this town. It happens too often. But at least there will be people looking after Sunset Bird. That makes me feel better about it. Also, Buggy, guess whose birthday you can say happy birthday to? Ultimate fan, I'm just saying. After a pause, Mr. Holden gave the younger folks a thumbs up. Great. That's all great, but you've got to be proud of and a lot to be looking forward to. Well said, Cliff. I'm thankful that I've been privileged to witness the growth you've undergone over the years. You've been each matured beautifully. Cove was touched by his parents' words and struggled to come up with something to follow. Um, yeah, it's been good seeing everyone. No one had taken a step yet and you couldn't put this off any longer. It was time to say goodbye. Ah. Uh... I'll see you again. I don't believe in goodbyes. Tell me I'm not the only one. I don't believe in goodbyes. I only believe in see you again. That's that's just how I feel about it. Nighttime is comforting. Yeah, I don't know. It's just something about night makes me feel more awake and more capable of doing things. Where like when I wake up in the morning, it takes me half a day to wake up. I don't know. Me neither. What? Huh? What? What? And, oh, you don't believe in goodbyes. Oh, I don't remember what I'm saying. Gotta run to work, but I'll watch the bomb when I get back. Yes, Jackie, oh my God. I'll make all of the kiss options for you, Jackie. Just for you, I'm gonna I'm gonna kiss all of Cove, whatever I can for the wedding, okay? I got you. Have a wonderful day at work. I hope it goes by very fast and that you're not bored. 
and I hope it's relaxing but busy because that makes it less boring, right? I don't know. I love you, Jackie. Have a good rest of your day. Lee put her hands on her hips. Miranda and Terry gave you similar confident looks. Yeah. Exactly. There's going to be a free weekend somewhere. I know it won't be everyone, but some are better than none. A calming wave of tingles washed over you after seeing their reactions. You knew that it wouldn't have to be too long before someone made the trek out for a short visit. Afterwards, there was more sniffling and hugs and a lot of hugs. Then people started trailing out into the street, seeing others off. Your friends and family got into their cars and left the neighborhood. By the time things had fully settled, you realized that the sun had set. Earlier, you and Cove decided on having a car pick you both up. Neither of you wanted to, be, to bother your parents after such a long day. It would be a little while longer before it would be there, though. It was the right choice, as both sets of parents shot you weary looks. The four seemed ready to call it a night. It didn't take either of you or Cove very long to assure them that it was okay to head home and to go to bed. With one more round of goodbyes, good nights and goodbyes, your families returned to the condos. Then the only people left on the street were you and Cove. Cove closed his eyes, humming happily while waited for it to pass. He stared up at the sky. The moment was comforting, but suddenly your face scrunched up with news. Something was wrong. Something that made you feel somewhat empty. And then it dawned on you. Cove's wind chime wasn't here anymore. The feeling of the wind washing over the street just wasn't right without that familiar tune. But Cove had taken it with him in the move. With a bitter street smile, you knew that you'd be able to hear it again when you got home. Um, the main guy, Zach Guilford, and the one woman, Kate Siegel, are sexy? They're sexy in the show? Also, Oop Daddy Priest is only sexy in this show. The actor isn't very sexy. Maybe he's sexy because he's a priest? Do I have things to unpack? Yeah, I think you might have things to unpack, Bugs. <laughs> Why is he only sexy because he's a priest? Uh, let's talk about that, huh? What, what, what does that mean? Let's, let us analyze why being a priest makes him sexy, you know? Why is that? <laughs> Today is Monday, I don't work. Guys, help me. Jackie doesn't work! That means Jackie's here! I love Jackie! Yay! I mean, I'm glad you don't have to work, Jackie. Yeah, you have some stuff to unpack. <laughs> facts, facts. I'm with Pyrobugs. Blasphemy? I don't know if it's blasphemy. It's just why... Why only priests? You know, like think of, think of, have you ever seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame? You know that guy who sings Hellfire? He's not sexy. He's not sexy. You're, thank you for the snake snack, dragon. I'm gonna buy food now that I'm depressed. Why are you, do oh, you're dressed. Okay, go, go buy food, Jackie. Have nice food. Go get something yummy. Thanks for the snake snack, dragon. Alright. Coast hands were in his pockets and his shoulders were relaxed when he caught your attention with a tilt of his head. So... Can you guess what I'm thinking? Well, at that moment, you were in the neighborhood you grew up in together with some time to spare. You rolled your shoulders back and pretended to crack a few of your knuckles. An amused look fidgeted on Coast's face while he observed you silently. Could you perhaps be thinking that the fireflies are out now? Could we have proposed during the fireflies? Could we have proposed during the fireflies? Could we have proposed during the fireflies? Do I need to go all the way back? Do I need to go all the way back to find out if we could have proposed during the fireflies? Although telling our families was really cute. Telling our families was cute. Um, oops. Right. Right. Do you want to go to the poppy here for the hill before we leave? Always. There was an eager bounce in your step as you and Cove crossed over towards the hill behind your mom's house. I bet we could have proposed during the during the fireflies. Wow, when did it get so dark outside already? I know the sun sets so early. He's married to one of the women from um, American Horror Story. Aesthetically sexy, by the way. I don't like men this way. Yes, we know you're a lesbian. Oh, hold on. Let me reenact my clip. Every time you say this. <gasps> Buggy is gay? There you go. A reenactment of a reenactment. <laughs> side by side, you stare. Yeah. LGBTQIA. Buggy's gay. <laughs> 
As you imagine the hill was dotted with glowing firefly light, it perfectly reflected the memories of childhood held closely in your mind. Cove sighed contentedly, seeing them across the hill weaving in around the blaze of glass and the stars above. Eventually, Cove moved his attention back to you again. There was a dazzling brightness there in his expression that quickly morphed into something more mischievous. Want to catch one? He asked, raising a curious eyebrow, but then he didn't wait for you to respond. Cove bolted off after the fireflies that happened to dart past his nose. If you were in my real life straight friends, you'd be tired of me making gay jokes by now. <laughs> Do you make gay jokes all the time? Because who doesn't? Um, oh, it's on. Kicking up a bit of dirt and leaves, you bolted in the opposite direction after a few fireflies that captured your attention. The first one that flitted into your range, you dove for it. Did you get one? It escaped between your fingers, but that didn't dim a second of your fun. You shook your head, trying to find your next target. The next one, I can feel it. Unless you're feeling more victory, future victory. Out of the corner of your eye, you watch Cove get spun nearly around, following on one that was staying just out of reach. Chuckling, you crouched down low, searching the air. The pursuit for fireflies continued until a handful had been caught. Cove crossed over to you with a bright grin that could reveal every twinkling bug and, and well, twinkling bug and star around you. Um, both of you to assume were strange. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm tired of only knowing straight people in real life, so I'd welcome that. I swear everyone I know is gay, y'all. I think I've just crafted the perfect group of people in my life because if I know someone who's hetero, it's like a token hetero at this point, you know? Um, oh my god, I can't imagine. <laughs> everyone online is gay. Why is that? Why is everyone online gay? Um, I'm in real life straight friend and I'm not sick of the gay jokes. That's fair. That's fair, Darmo. Um, bring on all the gay jokes. All of them. All of them. All of them. I did, I did a, I did a um, TikTok filter today, y'all. And it was like, what's your red flag? Guess what my red flag was? I want everyone to guess. What was my red flag? Uh, if you get it right, I will propose to you like home. <laughs> Um, we do tend to find each other. I like it. It's very cozy. I mean, I say I'm a hetero, but a 90% uh, is still an A. Darmo, I don't question people's sexualities, um, because I find that that's not my place nor my thing to do. But if you're only 90% hetero, just consider that. Um, because gay people don't have communities outside of the internet. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. Which I was trying to point out, we do uh, tend to find each other. Yeah, I know, I, it's it's safe, I guess. Um, it was strange. Not asking for pronouns? Um, wait, what do you mean? Huh? Do you need whose pronouns? I can see all of yours. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so confused. It was, um... <laughs> You're my favorite hetero. I'm panoramic, so yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I was like, mm. okay, so you were making a joke. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. No, your red flag. Oh no, that would have been a funny one. I forgot what I asked, Pyra. I literally forgot I asked for my red flags. Oh my god, no. Okay, two more guesses, and then I'll tell you. I'm pretty sure I'm hetero, but I want to explore my sexuality when I get the opportunity to be with some dragon. That's totally valid. I mean, I feel like you don't. I feel like, how can you know if you haven't had experiences, right? Um, and I also feel like the desire to explore that in and of itself is queer culture, you know? Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that ultimately you'll decide that you're gay. It just, you know, it, I just think that's part of it. I don't know if that makes sense. Did that make sense? Rude people is my red flag? No. Uh, yeah, no pressures. It's never too late to figure out. Exactly, exactly. It's never too late. You, no matter how old you are, even if you're 105, like, you can always still figure out your truth, you know? You know? Uh, no, my red flag was, uh, dad jokes. Only ever makes dad jokes. You're all welcome. <laughs> Um, cut between both his hands, Cove carefully held a firefly. The corners of his mouth twisted before a few giggles escaped him, and you knew that feeling well, the way the firefly would buzz around, tickling the palms of your hands. 
closed eyelids fluttered open, meeting yours. He washed you with a complicated mix of emotions, heavy with weight of 15 years of history of memories. <sighs> John Jones is your brand? You're your own red flag? I know! I laughed because it came up as a red flag and I was like, I mean, it's accurate. You're not wrong. So you like people who make dad jokes only or people... No, I make dad... My red flag about me is that I make dad jokes. <laughs> I only make dad jokes. That's, that's the red flag about myself. It's a re really a relief that I got to see the fireflies. This trip wouldn't have felt complete without it. Yeah, I think you're right. You spotted another firefly lowering to your eye level before looping up to the top of Coast Head. It landed right on his hair and you smirked. What? You have a very tiny firefly hat. I do? Before you could answer, the firefly took off and disappeared into the night. You gave it a tiny wave goodbye. Well, that didn't last very long. That's too bad. I'll remember them as my tiny hat forever. Me too. Taking a deep breath, Cove held your eye. He appeared to be conflicted about what he wanted to say next, and you waited for him to make his choice. It's so strange not to live here anymore. Most of my life, neither of us were re ever really away from Sunsuffered. Well, uh, unless one of us went on a trip somewhere. <laughs> or when both our families took trips together. Remember that? He chuckled, losing himself to fond reminiscing. You couldn't help but match his grin. Um... My red flag is that my favorite foods are peanut butter, black olives, and jalapenos together? Like, put together? Oh, not together. <laughs> Read the next sentence, Julia. Um, okay, I'm back, and no, I didn't forget I was doing laundry on a Saturday, and I just remembered to take everything out of the dryer. At least it was in the dryer, terrible. Imagine if it wasn't in the dryer, and it had just been in the washer for three days. Also, I literally cannot relate to my inner life friends. It's quite sad. I know it's hard. It's like, because you don't, when you're in real life, like you don't really get to seek out groups of people, right? That fit you. It's like your work friends, your school friends. But sometimes you'll find like people that you actually click with. This is the part where I lurky and witness the cuteness while waiting for Lego Harry Potter collection to re-download. Let's go. Oh my God, Ultimate Fan, that's amazing. Thank you for the lurk. Read the next sentence. I'm sorry. I read it. I read it. <laughs> I feel like my friends maybe have a, a little internalized homophobia. Oh, and because of some of the stuff they say, this is too deep to discuss. I don't have to talk about the thing. It's it's fine. I think it's fine to discuss if this. It just maybe uh, content warn if you think it might be triggering for anyone. Friends, what are these things called? Friends. Hey, <laughs> we are all friends here. Um. I like that road trip one a lot. Though I don't think Rawl could squish into the R that RV again. We're way too big. Laughing Coach shook his head. His brow creased the longer he sat with the thoughts spinging in his brain. Those visits back then with my mom, I remember what a big deal they felt like then to be away from here without anyone else coming for a whole few weeks. How little I knew. Hey, what did you used to tell your mom about me when you were on those trips? We were so innocent then. You know, I want to know what he told her. Throw not a litter off kilter. Kova hadn't been expecting that question at all. Both of his eyebrows raised, and a part of you wondered if you had somehow spoken gibberish instead. Also, I've been wondering uh, about it since I was 13. Kara always kept the details to herself, and you never said a word of either. Uh, well... Ko couldn't meet your stare for a second longer. Bashfully, he turned away, and his voice grew smaller. Mostly, I just tell her about the times we'd hang out, but I know I was pretty enthusiastic when I was because you were, you are someone really special to me. And I have admitted that much to my mom. Not sure if I used the word crush exactly, but um, she knew that you were the highlight of my young life. <laughs> I'm the highlight of your life now, sir. Excuse you. And look at that, you still are. Look at that, I still am. I still am. <laughs> He delivered that final thought earnestly enough that you stopped breathing altogether. Cove beamed at you, pleased with his confession. Thank you. You're welcome. I thank you for being my favorite story. Why is this game so romantic? What the fuck? You're my favorite story. What? I'm gonna cry. I'm doing a bad job of lurking. I love that ultimate fan. <laughs> I love this game so much. 
<laughs> it literally makes me blush. We're not gonna talk about how much this game makes me blush. One time, ultimate fan. Chat made me make out with Cove. And I turned red. <laughs> this was the first time ever. I was beat red. It was bad. <laughs> I'm just a, a shy little, shy little bird. <laughs> Made you? <laughs> Man, you wanted to. Jackie, remember we were doing the long haul? We were doing, we were doing the slow burn and Jackie was like, do it. And I was like, okay, it's Jackie, bet. We'll do it for you, Jackie B. And then we did it. <laughs> Okay, I think I need this game. I think everyone needs this game. It's really wholesome. In all seriousness, this game has like fantastic LGBTQIA representation, fantastic BIPOC representation, um, great trans representation, um, neurodivergent representation, um, family communication, and like, like healthy relationships. It's such a good game. And it's free. Yeah, it's free! <laughs> this game is free! The DLC isn't, so what we're about to play with the wedding isn't free, but it's like $2. Every DLC is like three to two to three dollars. It's like very affordable. Um, I forgot who our ace characters are in this game. This, 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 this Cove! Cove is ace! Cove is Demi! Cove is me! He's Demi! He's Demi Pan! Cove! 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 <laughs> Cove! Cove! Cove is! <laughs> um, also, we- I think we are. I think we made our character. Um, uh, ace. Cause you can- you can decide. You can decide if you're, uh, non-binary, trans, ace, um, lesbian, whatever you want to be, you can make yourself. So, I think we are. I don't know if there's another- I don't know if there's another character. I don't know if there's another one. Um, finally, Cove parted his hand and released the firefly back into the hill. It flew up around his face before darting away up into the sky, but your gaze was fixated on him. There was a touch of wistfulness in his features as he watched the bug disappear into the night. It wasn't until Cove turned his attention back to you that his demeanor warmed. Okay, I'm ready to go now. Uh, I think I'm ready too. Are you sure? Yeah, it's just goodbye for a little while. Mm, there'll be more nights like this one someday. Trailing a few steps behind Cove, you look back down the hill. You spotted your childhood home immediately. I'm grateful we could come home here and see how things are without us. It was nice. Yeah. It really was. With Cove right there along with you, you made your way down the hill with the same stars above trailing the way your last night in Sunset Bird was closing out. You were lost deep within a dream, adrift in the current of your unconscious mind. Cove was with you even there, his presence strong as your mind filtered from scene to scene, the logic of the conscious world melting around you. Something jolted you from your slumber, the visions you'd constructed slipping away even as you scrambled to catch them. It had been a good dream. Ah, uh, only- yeah, no goodbyes, only see you soon. You opened your eyes to an unlit, unfamiliar ceiling. The darkness permeated the room so thoroughly that you were sure it was still the middle of the night. As your eyes adjusted to what little light there was to catch on to, a smiling face cozied itself right up above you. There he was. Devin! <laughs> Good morning, Devin! The grin was bright enough to make it seem like maybe the sun had risen after all. Uh, wow, it's my dream come true! Don't say that sarcastically, say it's, uh, oh, it's my dream come true! Yeah! <laughs> Naturally, you weren't surprised to see him, but that didn't stop you from enjoying it every time. His expression softened at your voice, the tender affection in his gaze, obvious despite the dim space. You flicked his nose! <laughs> Co scrunched his eyes closed. I love, like, cute little affection things like that. Isn't that cute? Um, Co scrunched his eyes closed, snorting with laughter. I'm guessing you woke me up for a reason. Are you ever gonna let me know? Well, this is our last day here. Everyone might still be asleep, but if we get up now, we can at least see the neighborhood. Do you want to? Uh, with you, definitely. All right. Great. Then he held out one of those hands to help you get up too. Uh, you held out both arms, really asking him to lift you up. Lift me, Cole. 
step on me, Daddy. Come compiled, crouching down to scoop you up before gently sending you down again. Before you could uh, head out, you and Cope both needed to get dressed. You did so quietly. Okay, back to spooks. Okay, have fun nice spooks. Updates, but no spoils to follow. Okay, no spoils. I hope you had nice spooks. Um... The strangeness of the hour meant that your body seemed less coordinated than usual. Each article of clothing, a new puzzle, but you managed it. The two of you were eventually ready to head out into the wide world. Dawn still hadn't broken when you left the hotel, yet it was easy enough to get a, a ride down into Sunset Bird. The journey was peaceful. You might have expected sleep to attempt to claim you once again, with the sky still so dark, but Ko's excited energy was infectious. Uh, morning was finally starting to come over Sunset Bird as you arrived, almost like the sun itself wanted to be there to welcome you. Cove turned towards you, his eyes sparkling with anticipation. One more summer beach trip? You laughed, nodding to assure, reassure him as if there was any alternative now. That you were here, and he was looking at you so eagerly. Yeah, one more. You could have taken your time getting there, dwaddling under the morning sun, or you could have taken the short walk at a regular place. And both of those would have been just right for some other occasion. But this time, without either of you saying a word, you and Cove set off sprinting. The two of you tore gleefully down the street towards the beach, as excited, as ungainly as the kids you'd once been. You were laughing with joy at the absurdity of it all, being here at the break of dawn with a boy you'd once discovered on the nearby hill who never completely grew up. It was if... It was still early, you did your best to keep the noise down. To the side, you saw Cove covering his mouth to stifle his own giggles, similarly aware of the people sleeping in the condos around you. You thought of what that uh, meant. Old, not grandparents, would have said if they could see you now. All you could do was continue running and stumbling down towards the beach, away from the residences and their sleeping occupants. It was only a few minutes before you arrived at the expansive ocean shore. Cove kicked off his shoes and strode right into the water, not stopping until his feet were entirely submerged and the waves tickled his ankles. Uh, oh, let's go in the water with him. As to slipping off your shoes, you get let the sh shoes off. You let this, blah, 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 I cannot talk. Spooky, scary bugs send shivers down your spine. Oh my God, oh my God, this is not Halloween. But not as cold as when the wave pulled back and your wet feet were exposed to the air again. The two of you stood there watching as the sun continued its ascent over the horizon. Si <coughs> Excuse me. Silence still uh, fell between you until finally dawn had fully broken. Even then, Cove spoke in a whisper. Wow. I can't believe it's over. Uh... I can't either. A gozo smile crept over Cove's face like the sun peeking out between clouds on an overcast day. Ah! Ah! What is this picture? Cove! Cove reached out and enveloped your hand to his pressing your palms tightly together. The silence returned just for a second. I'm glad we came this morning and that we came on this whole visit back. I'm so glad. But more than anything, I'm glad for ending in this town in the first place where I got to grow up with a really nice neighbor. I couldn't have wanted any other life. Uh, I feel the same way, Space Cadet! That's what we said to him the first time we met him! <gasps> This game is so cute. Cove looked over at you out of the corner of his eyes, not turning his face away from the sea. His expression was full of affection, from the gentle curve in his smile to his clear, contented brow. It was a stark contrast to the tears rolling down his I cheeks. I love you. I love you. I love you. You counted yourself lucky. Even though you were leaving now, this place I gifted you is with so much that you'd carry with you wherever life might take you. The memories you'd made, the lessons you learned, the people you built relationships with, you'd keep those pieces of your life in Sunset Bird forever. You stirred with Ko silently, watching as bright rays swept away, the last of the night's nice shadows, until the day truly arrived. Your spirits were high as the sun rose ever higher in the sky. The two of you had found yourselves meandering back to the neighborhood street on sandy feet, strolling down the path just as you'd done thousands of times before. Okay, so I literally just now noticed the title of your stream and I'm like, I love you more now? Also, there needs to be a cove sound alert. I, 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 how? I don't know how to do that. How do I make a cove sound alert? Also, we're getting married, ultimate fan. We had to do that quote. Marriage is what brings us together today. This was where it all started. You were compelled to look at the exact spot you'd first encountered Mr. Holden sitting dejected on the curb. I do? Trigger fire? No, no. So I. Wait, there's a count. I have. 
I know how to do sound alerts. I just don't know how to do a cove sound alert. Uh, you can make sound alerts and alerts with gifts on them. How do, how would I get the sound of cove? <laughs> do I have to do the sound? Cove! <laughs> cove! Wait, okay, let's practice some cove sounds. <laughs> cove, 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 cove! <laughs> That's it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, he wasn't like that anymore. Still, you couldn't forget that day it began, just as you couldn't believe what an adventure it led to. Things had never been the same since that moment, and you couldn't be happier for it. Your mental lingering on that meeting had turned physical, causing you to stop in your tracks. It was only when you heard Cove's voice calling your name that you remembered when you were and realized what you'd done. And what a present it was. A shining sun, a clear blue sky, and Cove James Holden by your side. All the most natural things in the world. So what's the next step? You watch Cove expectantly, waiting for him to guide you forward from here. There's a crinkle around his eyes as he laughed. It's up to you now. It's up to us now! <laughs> I'll be! I would do it. I need to figure out how to do it. Uh, oh, you're giving me too much power, sir. Aren't you worried about about it going to my head? Co smirked, shaking his head. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm listening, so go ahead. His eyes met yours, holding your gaze. I believe in you, Devin. No matter how much time might pass, there were some things that you could count on to be consistent. Co, your family, his family, and all your other loved ones being there for you when you needed it. It was one of those things since the beginning and for always. That's the name of the game! Knowing they were there and you could never be truly alone made the future look all that much brighter. Ah, uh, want to find somewhere private to make out? Do you want to keep walking and go through town? Want to grab something to eat? We should see who can reach the end of the stream fastest. I want to wait and see what happens. What do we want to do? <laughs> what do we want to do? <laughs> I vote street racing. <laughs> that's my vote. I think that's the best option. Make out. I knew someone was gonna say that. <laughs> street racing. That's cool. Tell me street racing isn't cute though, son. No kiss? You wanna kiss? Suck his face? Oh my god, okay, okay. Chat wins, making out. <laughs> You were teasing him with that call, of course, but so much reminiscing about growing up had made you yearn for him. After all, ew, Jackie, stop. Sons of Bird had given you Cove. You wanted to enjoy both of them together. Cove spluttered out a laugh. Devin. He covered his mouth with his hands, staring at you over them with wide eyes. So you don't want to? He slowly lowered his hand, his gaze flickering shyly between you and the ground. <laughs> Dude, if there's like making out noises, I'm gonna die. No, there's not, there's not, there's not. He's slowly, I could do it for you. He slowly lowered his hands, his gaze flickering shyly between you and the ground. He's so cute, he's literally so cute, ultimate fan, I'm obsessed. Oh, I keep saving. <laughs> no, that'd be perfect. The fuck luck? <laughs> Your days growing up in Sunset Bird had been so wonderful, even the prospect of leaving again made your chest ache. Yet you weren't going to let that stop you. It would be hard, but you knew that it would still be there, waiting whenever you wanted to return. Facing Cove, who'd been by your side through it all, you knew that one day you'd look back on these moments now, just as you fondly reminisced about your childhood growing up here. Cody's being dipped at the wedding. Oh, you bet we're about to dip him. Each happy moment you experienced became only a memory of what used to be, but that was what life was, and it was okay. As it was from the beginning and continuing that way for always, life took another step forward. Ah! Oh my god! I love that! Okay. Alright. Come back again, always. Cody's needs to be dead. We're gonna, we're gonna kiss his freaking face so hard at the wedding. <laughs>